listeners, this is really important for the audience to understand and remember all this information. Uh, at the same time, it requires a previous step in which the scientists, and maybe also with the visual communicator, have to structure the information and try to get what is the most important things of that to highlight it in the image. And that's why uh, sometimes people say this thing that uh, image can work like thousand words because you really uh, can make like a resume with this type of visuals. And finally, it is also a very good way to attract people's attention and to raise their interest in curiosity. And when you have that, they are much more eager to understand what you are trying to explain. Also, these type of visuals are really important if you want to communicate by social media because you will have much more engagement and people we will um, share it and your message will arrive further. This uh, visual communication is anything new. We have been using it since the prehistory and you probably know this type of drawers that were in the caves. Uh, what people was trying like to describe what uh, is in, was in nature and also the typical activities that they were doing at that time. And with the evolution of the civilization also did the visual communication. And uh, one of my favorite examples of the start of scientific visual communication is uh, Leonardo da Vinci with his draws about anatomy. He was trying to improve his skills in, in art trying to understand uh, the, how is the body by its inside. And with his draws, I think uh, he really was able to explain it. With the advance, advancing technologies and the appearance of the microscope, it also um, opens the door to a new type of visual communication, this type at the microscale. And one of the main communicators in this area is, for example, uh, Ramon y Cajal with the draws of his cells that he also used to try to communicate with the scientific community, which were uh, what he was observing in the microscope and his theories about how these cells uh, work. So, well, now we have uh, better optics, we have better cameras, we can get very nice images at the microscale, at the nanoscale, and uh, Sometimes people could think, okay, if we can see the real images, why do we need some illustrations? But the thing is that they have different purposes. In the end, an uh, image that you take with a microscope is data that you have to process, and um, it could happen some artifacts that it's only that is prepared only for a specialized uh, eye. However, in an illustration, you can take this information and uh, make it uh, look like in a way that people could understand it. So, for example, in these two images, we have SARS-CoV-2. In the one uh, on the right, you can observe the, the image from the cryo electron microscopy. And uh, on the left, you can observe a scientific illustration of this virus. What you can observe in the illustration is that, is that it is much more easier for someone that is not specialized to understand the different structures of the virus, you can highlight also parts of it with the colors, and uh, you can even include information from different techniques to represent in one illustration. Also, you can give it context, since you can put it, for example, here in the lungs, or uh, you can even use it to um, guess things that we already don't know. So you take the information that is known at the moment, and you make a, a way of imagining that. This can help people to create different theories and to try to prove if they are wrong or right. So this is my, my, what I do in my job. So try to create illustrations and animation to help scientists to communicate their work. Sometimes I try to give an overview of the um, research that they have made as, for example, in a graphical abstract. Other time, it can be useful to explain complex concepts as this kind of illustrations uh, in infographics, or maybe some animations 
to explain an experiment. Like for example, here you can observe an AFM that is used to break a, a bacteria and it starts to shine in red because it means that it's red. You can also use illustrations to try to raise interest and curiosity and this is what uh, journals are trying to make with the cover. And also some companies use them to, yeah, to try to attract the attention of the clients using like big ads with this type of images. Or you can also make these types of animations to try to um, promote some kind of events as this one, that was the nano car race. Even this uh, car that was the one used for the nano spa team was like kind of symbolic and they even made cookies and these kind of things to promote <laughs> the event. So well, I think that you more or less understand now what is my, my job about. And I wanted to share with you a bit how I end up in this profession because uh, I didn't know that this profession exists when I was uh, 18 years and I need to decide what I wanted to do later. At this moment, I only know that I like biology, chemistry, physics. So I decided to study the biotechnology degree. During this degree, I realized that I like uh, research and that I wanted to be a scientist. So I continued studying a master in biophysics uh, because I wanted to understand how molecules interact between them and how really the, the world is working at the nano and the micro scale. And then I started to make my PhD at Indiana Nanoscience and during this time I was studying um, different protocols of uh, atomic force microscopy in combination with super resolution fluorescent microscopy to try to study um, some protein aggregates that are involved in the development of different diseases, for example, Alzheimer or Parkinson. And at the same time that I was doing my PhD, I started to have a new hobby because I discovered some software that is called Blender, that allows you to create um, models and put textures, lights, move the camera. So I started to learn how to make that using uh, some different videos of YouTube, like free tutorials. And when I had the basics to, to create my own things, I started to apply to make this type of easy, simple illustrations, some schemes, that I was using in my posters and in my talks to explain the AFM and also the, the fluorescent microscope. The thing is that the more I started to create this type of illustrations, the more I liked what I was doing. And sometimes a question came to my mind that was that, what if I make this my profession? But okay, yes, I was in the middle of the PhD, so it doesn't sound realistic because I didn't have the proper um, background to be able to do that in a professional level. So at this point, I decided that if I really wanted to do that, what I needed was to get these uh, skills that I didn't have. So I started to look to different ways of learning scientific visual communication, but the education that I found that was focused on that uh, was actually more focused in the traditional drawing. So more in water paint, oil paint, and that was not exactly the, the, what I was looking for. But then I found a two-year course that was about cinema and video games. And I realized that this is actually what I really wanted, to learn this type of tools and also the, the artistic skills, as for example, how to use the colors or the um, composition or the storytelling, to be able to apply all, all these tools to my uh, scientific visual images. So during some time, I was doing my PhD during the day, and in the evening and the weekends, I started to uh, create 3D models and also uh, design characters, uh, learning a bit about animation, programming, and all of this was really fun because it was something really different about the things that I have learned previously, but at the same time, at some point, I was in the end of my PhD. I had to finish experiments, write my thesis, and I also have exams in this new course. So that was a stressful period, and my hair became white. But anyway, it was worth it 
because at some point I got the last paper of my thesis accepted and the editor told us that if we wanted we could share um, send him a um, proposal for the cover. So that was my moment to show what I was able to do. Then I designed one illustration, we sent it and we were really happy because it made that to the front cover of the, of the journal. So to me that was like the proof that what I was doing was worthy and was something useful for the scientific community. So it was at that moment that I decided to share all my work on the social media. And from the social media some people started to contact me because they wanted also that, uh, that I create some visual for them. So then I uh, worked for some time as a postdoc at Indian Science, but uh, at uh, part-time as a scientific illustrator. And at some point I realized that what I really wanted to do was continue working as, as freelance, as scientific visual communicator. So now my <laughs> actual job looks like that. I spend most of my time like in front of the computer creating visuals and also learning new tools and trying to uh, find new ways of making different things to uh, try to improve. Uh, it was kind of lonely but at some point I found also another uh, freelance who is Enrique Sahagún from Cycel and he was making something similar like me and now we collaborate and this uh, gives us the opportunity to create bigger projects together and also it is much more fun because I have someone who with I can uh, ask for feedback like is in the same field. Uh, well, I sometimes uh, make other activities that are not only focused on visual, uh, making visuals as for example this type of activities of, uh, of communication to try to make people aware that this uh, profession exists and that the moment you, that you need something like that you are able to contact this type of professionals. In fact at some point I had the opportunity to uh, have an interview in Emprende TV in Televisión Española which was quite a really good experience for me. Also, uh, with other scientists, uh, which is called Cristina Puchales, we share an online shop and then we design some scientific um, illustrations and we uh, sell them, like on t-shirts and also on different caps, this type of things. And finally, sometimes I also do things that are not related to science, as for example, uh, this Atrapa Chispas is a book that is for kids and I make the illustrations and for me this was the opportunity of being able to connect with a new type of audience. And I think this will help me a lot also to create uh, more um, like naive illustrations to uh, focus science also for, for the young people. So well, now you know me a bit more and you understand how, uh, what I do in my job. So I think it's the moment that we speak about the workflow that we should follow to create an illustration or an animation. So the first step would be that you need some of these services, so you contact me and we make a, a meeting. And in this meeting, what I expect is to get to know the basics of your research and also which is the concept that you want to communicate. If uh, you have any figures, any examples that you like, or you have something that you have created with your PowerPoint, uh, whatever, it will also be really helpful for me to get to know a bit more about, about your research. And additionally, in these images, uh, sometimes we can find some visual symbols that are common in your field. For example, in biology, it's really typical to see proteins as ribbon diagrams. So probably in other fields you have other visual symbols that are also common to, to your area. And this is really useful to communicate in this type of visuals. And finally, if you have an idea and you uh, have uh, some sketch, it can be also really useful. It has to be like something really basic, something like that would be great. And here you can see the AFM and the bacteria as in the animation. It, this is a very good point to start and after some back and forth work we can arrive to some type of illustration that can be used for a journal cover. 
A uh, very important thing is to know which is your audience. Are you thinking of creating an image for a journal cover or for a paper, something like that, for your field? Or you are thinking in some type of divulgation events for young people or appearing in some news, something like that, because then the information maybe uh, needs to be more basic or less detailed, it depends. And also it depends on are you going to be able to explain it yourself or it has to be self-explained. So this kind of uh, questions we need to discuss about that. Also, which is the style that you, do you like? Because there are many styles, I think, also as styles as artists. So uh, it's good if you have some uh, ideas about that. I have divided like, very broadly, as for example, there are drawings that are de uh, handmade. Some are, for example, with traditional paints, as water paint, oil paint, or they can be made digital. But you have to be aware that when you are using this type of handmade illustrations, um, you have to really stuck with the sketch when you have approved it. Because later, when you have arrived to a, an state almost at the end, you are not going to be able to change, for example, the perspective. Or also, if you want to change the color in a traditional draw, you will have to start again. But in some digital wo uh, work, maybe you also can have some more versatility. Um, also, there are other types of styles. For example, this type of 2D images that are the typical that you get by Adobe Illustrator or with your PowerPoint. These are uh, more like taking primitive shapes and creating the objects that you like. These are more uh, clear and they tend to look more clean. So they are very useful for creating figures of papers. Uh, also, you don't have here like intense lights or um, uh, la uh, intense lights or materials that are distracting when you are trying to make a figure of a paper. And finally, the other style is 3D images in which you really create the 3D models and um, you can make an illustration from that. The nice thing about this type of illustration is that from this type of image that is almost in the end, you can take your camera, move it and change the perspective. So it gives you much more versatility. It's not like you change the camera and that's all. You have to make some arrangement, move the objects, create some different stuff, but still it's much more easier that starting from zero as it will be in a digital, in a hand drawing draw. Anyway, you also can combine them uh, depending on what is your interest. And also if you have some examples to share, that will be really useful because we can try to tune it and create something that you feel comfortable with. Uh, other important thing, if you feel creative, I think it's a very good uh, way to communicate to try to find analogies. Uh, for example, in this one of here, it was made for a, a structural biologist that was studying the proteins inside the mitochondria. And she always imagined it as some machines in which the different uh, subunits of the protein were the different pieces of the machine. So she also tries to be, uh, wanted to be very symbolic, and that's why we create this, uh, this uh, oil, uh, well, the oil that I don't know if you see the, it, but it, it means ATP. And when it is used, it, it has this kind of explosion, and it's when the protein is broken. And we had also another version in which these metallic hands were little people. So she wanted to have these both to use them in different, with different purpose. One was a figure and the other was just uh, for tools and these kind of things. Also, another example of these analogies are this one of here, in which um, this is a molecule that people were synthesizing uh, in the lab and it was mimicking another molecule that was working from inside a protein. So they were different molecules but you cannot differentiate them by their function or the efficiency. That's why they are like looking into the mirror. And they wanted to uh, link this idea with uh, Snow White or uh, Alice in Wonderland. And they just uh, add some little sentence to make people connect these ideas. 
So it works and uh, it was published uh, in the journal. Um, finally, this one of here in which uh, that was made for some uh, scientists that they were making a review about different uh, a, a protease, how to use protease um, to create um, these, uh, circuits for synthetic biology. And uh, they are using protease to control uh, the amount of proteins that they have in the media. So that's why they came up with this nice idea about uh, make the protease look like Pac-Man and the ghost as the other proteins that it has to eat. If uh, you are not thinking in an illustration, but you are more thinking in an animation, additionally to all these things that I have explained, uh, you have to bear in mind some other questions, like for example, which is the duration that you want it to have? Is it going to be something like short, for example, for the social media? Or you want to explain maybe all your project and it needs to be like three minutes, five minutes, something like that. Then uh, is the message easy to be understood just watching the video or do you need some voicing off? And is going to happen everything in one scenario or do we need to focus some in somewhere and change the, to one scenario to other? And um, finally, which is the ring that is going to have the video in order to put a uh, correct music on that. So with all this information, I will create a storyboard and we will go back and forth over this storyboard until you are happy with that, because this is the main step to be able to create uh, a wonderful uh, animation. And well, it is very important to have this first meeting I cannot uh, know which is the work that we have to perform if we, can, if we have not speak about all these things uh, because it can be very different and each work is completely different and personal. So um, it's very important to make this type of meeting and speak about which is the deadline, which is the budget, so then we can uh, adjust everything and make it suitable for you. And this is just a real example of the process of creating a journal um, image for a journal cover. So in this case, uh, some group of Indiana Science contacted me and they told me we have a paper accepted in advanced materials and interfaces. And the editor have told us that we have 15 days to give them some option for a journal cover. So we make a meeting and they show me this uh, image that they use in the graphical abstract and also this one that is an image of the material that they were creating. So uh, they told me that they were doing some material that has a nano pattern on top of that and that looks like this one and it has a special property that is that when a bacteria arrives it, get, it dies so it has bactericidal properties. What they do is that uh, they put some type of adhesive on that and when they detach it, they were able to obtain the bacterials in the, in the tape. And from that, they can study the, um, the topography that is on top of the bacteria that was in contact with the nanopattern material. So it will look like, like this one, like the negative part of these columns. They also came up with this a beautiful sketch in which they uh, show what uh, they were thinking that they want to show these three components and this idea of the tape detaching from the material. They also share the requirements of the journal, like the size and image ratio, and also, well, another important thing to keep in mind is which is the color space that you need to work on. If you are working RGB because uh, it's going to be digital, or if you are going to need to print it and then you need to work in the other color space and this means that your image uh, is not going to be so bright because uh, it depends on the inks that are going to be used to print the image. In this case, we were fine uh, with the RGB. So, well, uh, from the idea that they give me, I enter in my 3D software that looks something like that and I start to create the components, the 3D components for creating this image. 
So the first step was to create in the nano pattern material. So I started with uh, the cone, and then I create an array that uh, yeah, makes this uh, material in X and Y. From uh, after this one, I create the second component that is the bacteria. This was the most challenging one, and here I show you the moment in which it uh, works. But it needs some different trials previously to arrive to the good solution. So, well, I make the shape of the bacteria, and in order to create the pattern on, on the side of the bacteria, what I did is to put it in contact with the nano pattern material. And I subtract this uh, nano pattern structure from the model of the bacteria, getting something like that as we were observing in the experiment. And in the end, the last component was uh, something quite simple because it was only uh, the adhesive part that was a, like a plane following a curve. So, well, at this point, uh, we had the three components and it starts the fun because it's the moment to order them on the space and make something beautiful with that. So, it's a type of creating the composition. And I decided to go for something like this, in which I have duplicate the different uh, bacteria and yeah, located just like that. And for this, uh, creating this composition, I thought on some different things. Um, the main important is what is what I want to show in my image, which is the main component. In this case, it will be this part in which the bacteria is, in con is detaching from the material, and also this one, because here we can observe the nano pattern part uh, on the bacteria. That's why this is located in the center of these three thirds. There are many different rules of composition, but this is one of the most basic, like to locate it like in the center of these uh, thirds. And also, I will try to uh, focus the attention of the people in this area using light and color, but we will go through that later. It is important that the illustration should look like dynamic, and I think we are able to do that using this uh, idea of the tape detaching that is not static. Also, it is important to uh, create different planes to make this sensation of deepness. So you have some uh, bacteria that are near, near to the um, audience and also other elements that are farther. And with this idea, I came back to the scientists to see if they like this or which are the things that they would like to change. In this case, uh, it was approved, they like it. So the next step was to uh, think about the colors that we were going to use in this illustration. To do that, there are many tricks, as for example, that you, are, you know that are going to be kind of well. If you put on Google Adobe and write a color wheel, uh, in this web page, you can choose one color and it will give you different rules and different colors that are going to look harmonic with the one that you have choose. And there are also, as in composition, different rules that you can use. For example, uh, com use complementary colors uh, usually works quite well. You make like a monochromatic composition and you highlight the elements that you like in the opposite in the color wheel. That is a very nice trick. Also, um, in this case, I, was no I didn't like how it looks like, so I went for something like the triadic. It's a bit, uh, it uses like three colors. In this case, I put my bacteria in purple and also the materials and the tape in, in greenish and blue. And you, I use a light in a yellowish color. But, well, this is only a guide, and when you are creating the image, you tune it until you find comfortable with what you get. And finally, what I did was something like that. I also add the materials, and I add a light that was focusing in the middle of uh, the illustration to increase the attention of the audience in the central part that we have told that was the most important part. This also uh, increased the idea of deepness because the elements that are closer and that are far are out of this uh, light. And uh, also to increase the attention to the central part of the illustration, I cleared some blur 
in the elements that are closer are farther. So then your attention is more focused in the central park. I send this to the scientists. So we have the third interaction and they think that they like it, but they also have some observation to and something that they wanted to, to change. And uh, they told me that the holes, they are, well, as they are completely uh, illuminated, they doesn't look uh, as a horse because they should be more darker. I think that was a completely right uh, observation. And then uh, I remove, to try to correct it, I remove the central uh, light that was focusing in the middle of the illustration. So I got these dark uh, holes, but then uh, to try to give again the impression, the I catch an impression that has the other illustration, I have to take this to another software that was like uh, some kind of Photoshop and then add this light and this color in the central part and also the other darkers in the other parts. So in this type I had to mix the use of 3D and rendering with the uh, 2D draw and also I draw manually uh, the dark parts of the host to increase this sensation of dark edge. With this, I came back to the scientists. They, this time they were uh, happy with the illustration and we made um, the high resolution image in the correct format to send it to the journal. Finally, we were very happy because we make it to the front cover. So well, uh, now that's all that I wanted to share today with you. And these are just my, uh, my website, my email if you want to contact me and of course, uh, I try to be very active in the social media, so you always can uh, connect with me. And well, this last one that I think is more unknown is Art Station. And in this one, uh, you will uh, find my portfolio. So just to say that, thank you very much. And if you have any question, I will be very happy to answer. Uh, yes, well, if anyone has a question, I have the microphone here to be put on the internet. Thank you very much. Um, sometimes uh, we, we use uh, colors that uh, are also intuitive. For instance, when we are staining cells, we use red uh, markers for alive cells or red markers for dead cells. However, I, ha I have a friend who has uh, Daltonism and he complained about that. And uh, I know now that there are scales that are suitable for people with Daltonism. I don't know if you have uh, ever used this kind of uh, color scales. Yeah, thank you, that's true. And uh, uh, sometimes um, it happens to me, for example, I show some covers that is in green and in red because of that, because they were using fluorescence and they wanted to stack the, uh, with that. But you are right that you should not do that uh, because there are so many people in science that are daltonic and they have this problem. And uh, in some cases people uh, is aware of that and they have asked me to change the red to more magenta that I think they can differentiate. So it's true that this is something that we should, we should keep in mind, but in the end the decision is from the scientist who wants to create the, the image. Hmm. I have a question too, like, do you feel like in the, most in the scientific communications the, or scientific people, is there any rejection or reluctancy to be creative, as you said, just to fight against um, the lack of strictness of the image? To be like more creative, you mean? Yeah, you say like, let's go creative, but some yeah. scientists may say like, hey, but this is not rigorous. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people think like that and they prefer to make something like literally as their experiment. Mm -hmm. But I think, mm, well, I think that always you can look to what, or, um, what how are the other illustrations in the journal and see what does uh, they like. Or you can also speak with the editor, as for example, this one of the Pac-Man. Um, in this, uh, it was published in Open Biology and they usually um, use photographies. So the, the scientists 
us to the editor. We are thinking of making this Pac-Man idea, so it's completely different about what you are usually doing, but he was very happy to get this idea, and that's why it is in the front cover. So I think you can be open and ask the editor which kind of style do they like, if they are open to uh, get this type of ideas. Hmm. Yeah, actually, that was my second question. Like, from the proper journalists, are this need of new, let's say, fresh ideas on communicating and on front covers of of journals? And how is it going to develop? You think? I think that really depends on the journal and on who is yeah, uh, making the decision. So that that's why I consider it's very good to speak with them. But in any case, if you are not using it for a journal and you are going to make a personal use, I have really found that this type of analogies connect much more with the audience because even if they are not from your field, they w are going to be able to understand that, uh, that a Pac-Man is a Pac-Man and a ghost is the ghost and one is going to eat the other, so it will better stuck in their mind. That's why I think that it's very nice to be open to this type of creative ideas. Also, it's much more difficult and it takes much more time because we need to try different things. It's not like always you get something that you like. Sometimes we start with something and we end with something different, completely different. Hmm. Okay. So, thank you very much, Patricia. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>